Dawes says that Ashton is his favorite because if he rolls up to Knoxville with Slitherwing, he might be my favorite too. Honestly, yeah. like I want to see that Pokemon. I don't want to get too biased with rooting for anyone, but I'm just Slitherwing would be really cool. I wouldn't be up to upset about that. Hey, and if there's any player that could really make Slitherwing work, I think it would be Ashton. Uh, he's one of those players that has been around the scene for a while, and yeah, I know he said that he hasn't had top cut in a while, but a uh, little, little. Duh, maybe he didn't touch on this, maybe he did, but for modesty, uh, Ashton had some like pretty bad hacks in San Diego, so I feel like that's something he might have left out of the story there, because um, he has been a very modest player, uh, but also, I heard Joe laughing backstage. <laughs> the fact that he, yeah. Betrayal. <laughs> the betrayal, but uh, oh, production <laughs> has been clutch. You're awesome, but uh, Amelia Forbes, world finalist, two-time regional champion, and the regional runs that he goes on are just insane. Being able to go through these types of events undefeated. I mean, you were talking about Ashton and pretty bad hacks and just things not going his way. Those are things that happen to every single player. So Emilio mm -hmm. still somehow coming out of it with an undefeated record so time and time again is the craziest thing. It is like the anime arc of anime arcs out here. <laughs> yeah, one of those uh, t regional titles was very recent as well. Uh, Emilio Forbes, another undefeated run through the New Jersey regional that we had in Sword and Shield last year. So that's really great to see him come back in and see if he can get that repeat run. On the other side of things, we've got Wolf Glick, the man that's done it all here. Every single title of competition has been earned by this player. Uh, and looking at his team list as well, he is the only player that ended up bringing the Scream Tail um, and also just the Parish Trap archetype in general. And the fact that it's made it here to top eight is incredibly impressive. Especially too, you touched on the fact that there has been Parish Trap representation out on the field on day one. It just wasn't something that people were managing to make into top 32, though they did actually still end at impressive records. It wasn't like they were at all the bottom tables and the, the, the team was just bad. Like, no, it was impressive records. It's just so little people can be making it only top 32 and Wolf, the sole representative of Paratrap, moving on board. And, uh, and the Paratrap is one of those things that he's been known for in the past, right? So definitely in the right hands, it can be really good. And I think Wolf Glick is one of those players that could really make the archetype shine. And he has already. On the other side of things, though, when you look at the team matchups across the board, we got a chance to see both of these players yesterday. Uh, and Emilio Forbes, of course, being able to win his match on stream. What did you think of the Glamora that was on his team? You read my mind because you're talking about the Scream Tale and stuff that's unique to Wolf, but the Glamora is something that is unique to Emilio. I feel like it's a Pokemon, even if we did get to see it have usage in Liverpool, maybe being inspired, well, most likely being inspired by Emilio's run in San Diego. I feel like still it's just a Pokemon that it's Emilio's Pokemon. This is the one that he has mastery of. There's a lot of really cool pieces to it, that toxic debris, you try and hit into the Glamour to get rid of it, and all of a sudden you're setting up toxic spikes on your own end of the field. And that's something that you have to be dealing with from here on out. And just that in itself, I think, makes it such a dangerous Pokemon to go up against, especially if you don't have a set concrete plan. Wolf, however, is a person with a plan, and things like Parish Song does not going to be activating that toxic tree. So it will be really interesting to see that. Yeah, it's like kind of whether or not you target down the Glamora or you leave it for later. I mean, the choice specs makes it incredibly threatening Pokemon. This is a variant and build that Emilio Forbes ran in that San Diego run as well. But whether or not it comes in the front or the back or comes to the game at all is still yet to be determined. And you look at just kind of the amount of pressure that it can put on with either the ability or those attacks, really great call out. The other thing that I want to look at here is the Great Tusk and an the Iron Bundle Fluttermane. There's a lot of Paradox Pokemon on Emilio's team, and we're already to see a Paradox Pokemon from Wolf's team hit the field. One from each side, one that's pretty well known, and one that, well, we only get to see when Wolf is on stream. It's the Screamtail and Palafin facing off against the Fluttermane and the King Gambit. So we saw Palafin brought to the games that Wolf played against Chongqing Peng yesterday on stream. And he actually was able to do quite a bit of work with the Palafin in just its little zero form here. Uh, maybe it's gonna be able to transform into the hero form later if Wolf decides to switch it out. But with the Jet Punch being able to give you that priority access uh, to that water type attack, that's gonna be able to help soften up some of these targets here. But 
It's tricky. Fluttermane is putting on a ton of offensive pressure. I know, Sierra, you'd like to talk about the Dazzling Gleam as one of those uh, moves that this Fluttermane is able to really dish out a ton of damage with, but he's got some uh, nice options too with the Shadow Ball. It does, though. You do have to be careful as well because that Pokemon can be kind of frail at some points so and make sure that's preserved so you're going to be able to cast cannon it when it's most appropriate. To start things off, though, the King Gambit going to be terrestrializing and going for this flying pipe. Now Fluttermane with that protect, it's going to be nice and safe throughout this turn and Jet Punch from the Palafin. This is going to be targeting into the Fluttermane, so last nothing this time around. The play rip from Screamtail also going to be essentially a wasted move that was such a nice protect over on Emilio's end. And so the King Gambit will be the only one that gets to move this turn. Super effective Iron Head into the Screamtail. Yeah, it's still not going to be enough to get the knockout here, but the fact that the King Gambit did much uh, that much damage to the Screamtail does also uh, kind of put a timer onto the effectiveness of the Screamtail as well. It was really nicely preserved in the games you saw from Wolf on stream yesterday, where you did have the opportunity to go for a Parish Song a little bit later on in the game. Um, but whether or not there's another Parish Song user uh, in this four, his Fluttermane does get access to that as well. We'll have to see what he has brought in the back, but Emilio preserving the Flutter main is going to be really nice to help shore up the end game when it is a pretty speedy Pokemon. Yes, and bringing the Iron Bundle in its place. We're speaking of speedy Pokemon, we're replacing one speedy Pokemon with an even speedier Pokemon, even more so with thanks to the booster energy, activating that core drive and getting a 50% boost to its speed. It's going to take that check punch so well in the Screamtail. It doesn't take that quite well, but it takes it well enough. Now Screamtail, able to survive, can go for a play rough, though not doing the most damage into that Iron Bundle swap. No, I think that was a really safe swap there by Emilio, and also the Iron Bundle being in play does get access to Hydro Pump, Freeze Dry, Icy Wind. You can see the move selection there from Emilio, and so having some nice options to be able to deal with the speed to also help this King Gambit survive a little bit better and help dish out more damage. Yeah, what did you call... Iron Bundle is like fake Reggie Alecki. Yes. <laughs> no, definitely. I mean, it's very speedy. It actually has a speed tier that can that can match that of the Reggie Alecki if trained properly. Um, and with the booster energy as well to really help make sure that it's going to get those attacks off. Yeah, I'd say so. <laughs> At this point, a swap. Taking that Screamtail away, but bringing the Gothitelle in. This will make it so things are trapped out on the field and are going to be stuck in the respective slots. The Icy Wind that is just going to be doing just a little bit. But um, I mean, Gothitelle, not one known for its speed anyways. No, I think it's really going to be more for its utility here in this game where the Shadow Tag, yes, locks down both of these uh, Pokemon, but also you have access to Heal Pulse here. It's not a move that we ended up seeing too much of yesterday, but it could help to keep one of the more offensive threats on Wolf's team alive just a little bit longer. Uh, the Psychic not going to be doing too much here. Um, uh, depending on whether or not you're going to end up targeting into the Arm Bundle or the King Gambit, it's not known for its offensive pressure. But Screamtail coming back out here, at least Palafin might be able to go from zero to hero. Yeah, getting that swap, it's nice because you get a chance to re-pivot and then that extra little make sure that the Palafin can come in on better health. Fake out into the King Gambit and the Iron Bundle having gone for a protect means no pressure at all coming from Emilio. Yeah, you're going to really be looking at the fact that a wolf can kind of identify that. Maybe he's not expecting there to be a second protect on the field, but uh, still, Emilio's got this speed control, which has been really, really helpful. Maybe you're able to go for a spread attack here. He's really kind of try to figure out whether or not it's more important to get rid of the Gothitelle or try to get the knockout onto the Screamtail. It's, it's going to be tough from here on out. you got to get the targeting right for these next few turns. Yeah, especially, too, Gothitelle is one of those Pokemon that's really weird because sometimes it does the most and sometimes it just does the least. Like, you want to be able to put that respect properly onto the Gothitelle, but Gothitelle going for the Protect this turn means that Wolf wants to be preserving it. Iron Bundle having targeted into that is going to be doing nothing this turn. The Gothitelle, of course, is going to be nice and safe behind it as Screamtail does go for the Parish Song. Gothitelle not being taken care of means that Emilio's Pokemon are on a timer. Yeah, I mean, it seemed to be said for wolves, right? Uh, the 
we're going to see the Parish Song actually go through uh, the Protect there as well. So Gothitelle is going to have to deal with that too. You can also see how the kind of the speed interactions are going there because it'll show you the count for the Parish count in the order of the, the speed there. So Gothitelle being one of the slowest Pokemon on the field. But we're going to have to see some swaps come through here if we're going to want to see some staying power from these Pokemon. And that's going to give Emilio the option to keep the Iron Bundle and the King Gambit alive for a little bit longer, but also Wolf the opportunity to potentially switch in this hero form Palafin to start getting some damage with that Pokemon too. And this is also where Gothitelle becomes really dangerous because of the fact that it's making sure that Emilio can't be swapping out the Pokemon. So for sure. Wolf can always go and swap the Pokemon, the Parish Song, whatever. This is, you're used to this. Whereas Emilio, if you can't take care of the Gothitelle, you can't swap. So you are in such a precarious situation. The Screamtail is going to be taking the leave, the Parish Song reset onto that slot, but the Amoongus in its slot instead. Yeah, and, and Amoongus here is, is really nice to, to see just because you have the, the opportunity to go for some utility there. You also have Pollen Puff, so that's another way to be able to kind of keep your Pokemon alive. But uh, interesting Terra here coming out from the Gothitelle, we see the Water Terrestrialization. Yeah, try and make sure that it's not going to be taking too much damage from anything defensive. Terra types is always so nice. Icy Wind is just a little bit of chip damage all around. The move just being even slower. All right, all right. The insurance, that is still going to be a good amount of damage into the Gothitelle, but bringing it down considerably low, it will get a chance to get a little bit more health with that Citra Berry, and obviously being able to thrive is going to be the important part. Psychic into the Iron Bundle. The Iron Bundle isn't going to have to worry about the Parish Song because it's going to perish uh, right now. Yeah, that's for sure. I mean, well, Iron Bundle is not necessarily known for its bulk in the Special Defense Department there, so Gothitelle being able to get a really nice knockout there. But now Fluttermane is going to be able to come back in, and after all of the icy winds that have come through, you know, Gothitelle, Moongus, maybe not the speediest Pokemon here, but Fluttermane will not have a problem being able to get some damage off into both of these Pokemon, and it didn't hear the song. So it will be able to stay alive and be able to get some nice spread damage out onto both the Moongus and Gothitelle. Gothitelle, though, being able to go for the Protect this turn. No spread move in the world is going to be able to get around that. And just the double Protect. I really like this. Make sure that your Pokemon are nice and safe as the Desperation with this King Gambit is going to be coming out. The Dazzling Gleam is going to be doing absolutely nothing. Neither will the King Gambit. And then next turn, this King Gambit's still stuck. It's still locked. Yeah, that's not going to be a Pokemon that can pivot out here. Um, but Wolf is, uh, is going to be able to maybe just sacrifice this Gothitelle here or just switch it out. This is going to be the final turn that both of these trainers have to preserve the Gothitelle and King Gambit respectively. But you're just going to go for damage here if you're Emilio's side. And I, I do really like this option just to see if you can secure a knockout into something. Just do something with this King Gambit before it's gone. The Screamtail is going to be coming in, making sure the Amoongus stays safe. It does look like a little bit of a sacrifice from the Gothitelle, and the Screamtail essentially being brought into the slot was a sacrifice as well. The Fluttermane will be picking up the KO on the slot, and the Terra Blast from the King Gambit to be going into the Gothitelle at this point, just for the stat sheet. King Gambit, let's go. You got a KO, but that thing was gone anyways. But at least it would cover if there was a swap in. Yeah, absolutely. If the Palafin comes into that slot, that's going to be a good amount of damage there too, especially because you do have the same type of attack bonus. But King Gambit is not going to go down without a fight here. So we'll fall to the Parish Song. And now both Emilio and Wolf are down to their final two Pokemon. The Glamora now coming in. So a ton of special attack pressure here on Emilio's board with the Glamora and the Fluttermane. But you're also having to contend with Wolf's side that has the ability to uh, redirect attacks there with the Amoongus that's going to get that health back as well with that Regenerator ability. Uh, so it has a lot of staying power here on the board as Palfin can fire off these really powerful jet punches with priority. What's cool about seeing Glamora so late is that there's not gonna be any risk about this Toxic Tree because what are you swapping in at this point? You're down to your last two Pokemon. So definitely one of those cool things about the Pokemon that are now not gonna be useful whatsoever. Mamoongus to start things off, it will be the Rage Powder to make sure this Pokemon stays so safe. We're not even gonna see anything from the Glamora anyways. Sure, there's the Toxic Debris, but uh, that is gonna be such a strong Jet Punch coming out from this Palafin. And now it's gonna be a Pokemon count in favor of Wolf at this point. Shadow Ball into the Amoongus, not nearly enough. 
Yeah, and you know, the Flutter main is holding that life orb, but unfortunately the priority jet punch and the chip damage that the Flutter main took from the life orb as well, that recoil is enough that Palafin would be able to get the knockout there too. No. Great game, first off, from both players. Fantastically won by Wolf. And I want to go back to that one turn where there's the sacrifice from the Gothitelle because it always feels weird when you're sacrificing your own Pokemon, but it's such an important skill in VGC to know when a Pokemon needs to be preserved and when its time is up and it needs to go. If anything had been brought in for that Gothitelle, yeah, you saved the Gothitelle, but the Terror Blast coming out from the King Gambit into that slot. That would have been dealing so much damage to anything coming in, considering it was the flying type at that point. So you really just, it's, it's such a better situation. The Gothitelle had served its purpose. You're bringing in something in that's full health, is going to be able to do whatever it wants without fear of the King Gambit. And it's just things like that that's really nice. Yeah, and it allowed Wolf to position in the Amoongus next to a full health Palafin. And so, yeah, you have the offensive pressure of the Palafin, but then the ability to redirect away. And if the Gothitelle had switched out in favor of the Palafin, which was the only option, then, you know, you're kind of stuck with this Amoongus that isn't that full HP, wouldn't be able to potentially withstand the hits. And so Wolf just identifying that that positioning game is going to be very important there. Love the call out. But game number two, it's upon us. Let's see. It is, and I'm so excited for this Palafin and that Screamtail once again starting things off and it'll be going up against Fluttermane and Glamora. Yeah, so a bit of an adjustment here. Wolf is going to stick to the same leads as game number one, but bringing Glamora in as a starting Pokemon here for Emilio. I mean, one of the reasons why that Toxic Debris is so nice is that you're getting some chip damage in if you're able to poison, and just every little bit of that damage is going to be able to help you secure these knockouts. Not to mention Fluttermane here as well is still putting on some offensive pressure. Emilio did switch it out in that very first turn of game number one. And there's some really nice safe switch options here too. So uh, you love to see that kind of thought process go through. This turn one's gonna mean a lot for how this pacing of this game two is going to go. It's so important for both players too, because even on the other end with that Palafin, you wanna make sure it's enabled as best as possible, whether it's going for an attack or it's gonna be able to take the chance to swap out. It will be the Iron Bundle coming in place of the Gamora at this point, of course, with that Cork Drive, getting that super nice little boost into its speed. Screamtail going for a protect. A little bit of scouting, making sure it's all good through this turn. Palafin as well going to be copying. So no swap, just scouting out what Emilio is thinking. Yeah, and I think the, the great part about the switch from Emilio is that you identify that Glamora would have taken super effective damage here from the Palafin had Wolf decided to go for, you know, the Jet Punch once again. And with the Mystic Water attached, and even in the Zero form, you're still going to be able to do a lot of damage there. Uh, so who knows how that roll really would have gone, depending on how this Glamora is trained. So you get a chance to preserve it for later. And Emilio gets a chance to also start kind of dealing some damage to this Palafin to make sure it's a little bit more manageable manageable in the end game. But we're going to see a swap come through here from Emilio as that Fluttermane goes back into its Pokeball. Yeah, the Fluttermane also such a strong Pokemon. Being able to preserve that, bring the King Gambit out. Sure, it perished last time, but it's still such a strong Pokemon to have. Really good swap over on Wolf's end as well. We talked about the Iron Bundle, just how great the moveset is on it. Freeze Drive being one of those moves. Palafin wouldn't have appreciated it whatsoever, but Gothicel can do a lot better. And the Fluttermane having swapped out, now two non-ghost types on Emilio's side of the board. They're now Parish Song and they're now trapped. Yes, that is such a great point. I mean, the Fluttermane too, yes, it's been able to be preserved, but it would have been a great way to pivot into something that you might have wanted to be able to see here instead. Something like the Glamora that would be able to put a ton of pressure there onto the Screamtail in particular. Um, but right now, yeah, there's no option for that. And so Emilio on a timer here to try to deal as much damage as possible. And if you can get rid of the Gothitelle, then you have the ability to switch back out and you won't have to deal with these three turns of countdown here for the Parish Song. And no protects instead, just limiting the options that Emilio has, the fake out, followed up with the disable on to that freeze drive, making sure this Iron Bundle doesn't get access to a move that could be oh so nice. And of course, Wolf still has options to be going for these protects or anything else. Yeah, I mean, too, like, Freeze Dry was probably some of the, the best damage. You have the risk of missing the Hydro Pump, so you never really want to go for the... I, I mean, it's, it's risky, right? Do you feel like you're going to get it or not? But it looks like we are going to see the protects you were talking about. 
there's one and there's the second. I mean, the first turn, you felt so comfortable with just locking things down. The freeze dry was never going to be doing enough. And that's wasting the one turn of Parish Song that you can just go for the protect the next turn around. So this Icy Wind, it's going to do nothing. The King Gambit, it's going to do nothing. This is always the position that's so frustrating when you're going up against Paris Song because at this point, there's so few options. The game is just happening to you. Yeah, I mean, at this point, too, when the Parish count has fallen to one, this is the final turn that Emilio has to be able to remove that Gothitelle and get a switch, but the switches are going to happen so early. And is Emilio expecting a switch out here of the Gothitelle? Wolf was so willing to sacrifice that Pokemon earlier on in game number one in favor of getting the guaranteed two Pokemon knockout. It's likely that we potentially see Screamtail get switched out here, but Emilio's gonna have to make a call and go for some damage. And it looks like it's gonna be going into the Screamtail slot to predict a switch in here. Yeah, because this is the last thing that you can be doing as Emilio with these Pokemon. The Pokemon are gonna perish at the end of the turn. So whatever you can be doing into this is going to be key. Try and take down a threat on Wolf's side while you still have these Pokemon at your disposal. The Moong is coming in for the Screamtail. The Screamtail is safe, but the Hydro Pump not doing much into that anyways. And the Heal Pulse, well, that is just going to be bringing it right up to full. The Assurance, it is going to do a bit more damage, but still not nearly enough. And Iron Bundle, King Gambit, your time is up. Yep, those are going to be two heavy knockouts here for Emilio, bringing him down to his final two Pokemon in that Glamora and that Flutter main. And so, wow, Wolf does sacrifice the Gothitelle. You have the ability to pivot around one more time. Screamtail or Palafin gets to come in. Palafin would have the hero form activated. And then you have the Amoongus able to switch back out as well to be able to restore some of its HP with that regenerator ability if you decide to go for that. But this is all that Emilio has left. And you're really looking at Fluttermane being able to do enough there with the life orb to increase its damage. And then of course, that Glamora as well with its choice specs. This move that Emilio picks is going to be the move it locks into for the rest of the game. And what's frustrating about the situation, too, is we're talking about all the moves that can go off and all the damage that they've done and everything else. Well, there's three Pokemon and a Screamtail on the field. That is Parish Song. Honestly, there is just a world, too, where you just click it again and just go, haha, well, there it is. There's the timer. And Wolf actually has the opportunity to go for another double protect here with the Amoongus and the Screamtail. Because the Glamora is going to lock itself into a move, you get a chance to figure out what that move is going to be. You called that out in our first match that we casted earlier today, and so we get a chance to see that in effect again, where Wolf gets a chance to play around that choice a little bit more here. And being able to just know exactly what your opponent's throwing at you is just so nice. And there is going to be Screamtail with that protect, Good way to scout things out in the Amoongus, not for to follow. These Pokemon are in such sync, such pairs. Wherever we see one protect, <laughs> we're going to see another. They know. They know. <laughs> Our friendship. Absolutely. You can see that uh, the targeting right now really is going to be going after uh, the Screamtail at the moment. Glamora locking itself into the Earth Power. Uh, so and when you look at what's kind of what's in the back there, is that Earth Power going to be enough to help deal with that Palafin that's still sitting at full health? And Amoongus using the Rage Powder here too. Now Screamtail's very safe to go for any attack here. And yeah, making sure that things are going to be redirected, but it's just going to be for the one turn with that Flutter main to make sure that this Amoongus is not going to be able to go for anything further on except for this Mental Herb. At least that's going to be burned. At least you can go for something oh. next turn, but dis able the glamora locked into that earth power disabled that's tough that is so tough all it has the ability to do here is struggle which is going to make it so much easier to knock out as palafin now takes the field instead of that scream tail wolf has his game basically on lock here this palafin is going to say so nice and safe at this point as the amoongus again with the Rage Powder and no taunt this time around. Instead, we need to get this out of here. The Shadow Ball is going to be able to be picking up the KO at this point, but it's Glamora in this situation. No moves left that it can use, and the struggle does so oh. little to the opponent, so much to yourself, and even just in this position anyways, you're no threat at this point. 
even if you were some sort of threat, we've already got to see just how dangerous that this Palafin was in the first game. Yeah, and also how much pressure the Screamtail is putting on with that Disable at its disposal. You know, it shut down Glamour's ability to, to do any work here, and it could also shut down Fluttermane's Shadow Ball, so it would be forced to go for uh, the other attack that it has available to it in terms of that Dazzling Gleam. And this is just extra added offensive pressure. Wolf now with the double same type attack bonus, as well as the Mystic Water. Those jet punches are going to hurt. It might be the hero form Palafin on Wolf's end, but I think Emilio is the one that needs the hero in this case. But at least being able to go through that one turn, the Fluttermane staying safe behind the Protect, and of course the targeting into that slot, considering that the Glamora is not being able to do anything at this point, except consistently just do damage to itself. Fluttermane, that is the real deal at this point. That is a threat. That's what needs taken care of, and that Protect is burned. Yeah, it's it's all up here. So it's really just up to the Palafin here for a Wolf to try to sweep up the rest of the competition here. I think Emilio is seeing the writing on the wall. Still going to go ahead and go for the Protects, though, and do whatever he can as Struggle just continuously trying to get as much health off of these targets as possible. But, you know, this might be where his run ends. Emilio is going to lose his undefeated streak. Yeah, even when you're getting something like that double protect to the Fluttermane. main the glamora will take a little bit of damage and it's just struggling so low even at the play rough it's not going to be enough it's no longer disabled at this point but the thing is that palafin it still has the priority so that's the that's the tough part yeah and unfortunately you could see there it would have been really nice for amelia to go for uh the power gem there unfortunately uh, the choice vex is still going to lock you into that earth power and with the protect here on the scream tail and <laughs> just going for the protect again wolf knows that after the disable is up he gets a chance to scout out for uh, the move again but it's still just going to be that earth power yeah locked into that and the flutter main i mean you know you can see the writing at the wall at this point that priority Elephant so is strong, and that's going to be Wolf Glick taking down the unbeatable to be moving on in this competition. Yeah, what a masterclass on how to use Parish Trap as well. Just showing off the range of what this team is really capable of doing. It's very positionally focused. It's very much a, kind of like a how do you manage the beginning to the middle and the end game? It's a lot of skill and expression involved. And to take down Emilio as well, who has put on such performances, uh, you know, one of the only Fluttermane with Taunt and Top Cut as well. What a cool move to be able to see teched onto that Pokemon. Yeah, I mean, it was such a great run from Emilio. And now we know what takes Emilio Forbes down. It is Parish Song, because there is not much that can take him down in any regional competition. I mean, he is such a great trainer. But there is a reason why Wolf was the sole Parish Song representative here in day two. I mean, that was really well played. And it felt like the entire match, Emilio just didn't have an option. You're looking at the game and you're watching the game pass Emilio by as he's sitting there and the Pokemon in front of him are protecting. And the Parish Song thing is just ticking down. I mean, that's it's, it's a little rough to watch, but you know that you're playing against a really good player when they're able to put you in a lock like that. Well, especially when Emilio uh, had switched out the Flutter main, and that's when the Gothitelle came in, right? You had locked out the ability for Emilio to actually switch any Pokemon out there uh, because with the Ghost typing, we would have been able to see Flutter main get a switch and maybe pivot into the Glamora, might be able to do some more damage there um, and force Wolf to put a switch in for the Palafin. Uh, but that's just sometimes how it goes, and Wolf got that recorrect. And Wolf's going to be moving on to top four here at Orlando Regional. So what does that have to take to take Parish Song down at this point? Oh my gosh, I mean, maybe Disable? <laughs> I'm not really sure here. Is it anyone was... running that other than Wolf? Hey, I've, that was a lot of pressure from that Screamtail too. I mean, I personally had Screamtail very much off of my radar for this tournament. Same. And so yeah. I think uh, this is exceeding a lot of expectations for that Paradox Pokemon. And you're definitely gonna have to look at Disable a little bit more now as well. I mean, with all of the choice items that are running around there, choice scarf, choice specs, even seeing some choice band. Look at how Screamtail shut down Glamora's offensive output. That's true, but I do think that Screamtail is that case of filling a very particular slot on a team that For you sure. can't really plug and play that Pokemon in any other team. So I really don't think that we're really going to still see much of Screamtail. It's just when you're going and running something like this Parish Song, 
having Parish Long, having this Disable, having this Protect, having these tools at your disposal, I think it just makes a really great Pokemon to really be rounding out because of the fact that you can't just protect but disable shutting things down like we just got to see. Right. I still think Emilio played such a strong game there. It was a really tough play to have to play around the Parish Song and he still did a phenomenal job and the fact that he even came into top eight with an undefeated record is definitely nothing to scoff at here but we're going to get ready for our next top eight match so don't go anywhere. We'll be back after the short break. <laughs> 